Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss output controls as part of application controls. So it's very important to look at the big picture before we start. When we have an accounting information system or information system in general, but since we are accounting students and CPA candidate, we're looking at the accounting information system. It's very important that the that the information that we produce is correct, reliable, has data integrity, so on and so forth. So any control is a place to check ourselves before the final product is produced. So in our journey, we have what's called input. Imp First, we have to input the data. At this stage, we have input controls. So we do have controls at the input level. And if you remember, we had a whole session about input controls and we said those are the most important controls. Why? Because if you keep the garbage, if you keep the uh, the infection, the errors out of the system, that's, e that's the best way to do it. But let's assume the input data failed. Now the data is being processed. When we process the data, we also have controls about processing the data. And we talked about those controls in the prior session. They're called processing controls. Once the data has been processed, now we have output. The output usually a report, a summary, uh, usually some sort of a data that we that we are producing in form of financial statement or in form of list of items or in form of, you know, maybe job order costing report or process costing report, so on and so forth. So in this session, if we did not catch the, the error at the input level and the processing level, well, we do have some output controls. But again, this is the last control that we discuss because once the data is out there, it's being used, well, if it's no good, then we failed at all, at all three levels. So this is the last step. So here we're focusing on de detecting any errors after processing. So this is a post-processing. As you can see, it's a post-processing step. Now, someone has to review the data. The output control is someone will have to review the data, but that someone has to be knowledgeable. They have to know what they are reading. If something is out of sync, if something does not make any sense, the person should be able to point out this. And this is why we rely on expert here, someone who's familiar with the data. Since they have certain expectation. And if those expectations are not there, if there's something out of whack, they should be able to pinpoint and they should be able to see what's going on. So just like with the input processing, we have certain common output controls that we need to discuss when it comes to output controls. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. What are some common output controls? Well, one thing is reconcile computer produce output from the processing to manual control totals. Now, if we have a lot of transactions, millions and millions of transactions, we could look at reasonableness. But if the information is reasonable, we should basically process or add the information manually and compare it. Why not? It, it, if it's worth doing the reconciliation, making sure it was processed properly. Also, we can compare the number of unit or transaction process to the number of units submitted. Make sure everything that was submitted was actually processed. Maybe we want to look at a sample of transaction of output. Maybe we have a lot. But let's take a look at a sample of 100 transactions. Let's take a look at 10 and compare those 10 transactions to the source document and make sure they are processed properly. This is output. If they are processed properly, the output should be correct. Maybe we can say, well, the process is working properly. But if we find two errors, then we might have an issue. So at least we can catch it before this information is, is used publicly or used across the company. We can verify dates and times of the processing to identify any out of sequence processing. We can also look at that to see what time the transaction 
is processed, what time should have been processed, is it out of sequence? Also, accounting information system, generally speaking, information system, they produce what's called the transaction logs. And I spoke about transaction log in the prior session when I spoke about processing control. And transaction logs keep track of who, what, when, and how. Okay. Usually, also transaction logs are used <laughs> when you print something. Uh, you, s you send your name, your ID, the time, what you are printing to the printer. So sometimes when the printer jammed, and I'm pretty sure you see this at work, everyone knows who jammed the printer because the, the, person, the person's log was there. But the transaction log is much, much more important in the real world. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch and show you an accounting information system called QuickBooks and show you what would a transaction log looks like, just so you understand the uh, appreciate the benefit of a transaction log. So let's go ahead and jump to QuickBooks. So this is a QuickBook, QuickBooks class that I am teaching and basically I assigned companies to my students and they're supposed to um, access access those companies. Basically it's their company, I'm their accountant and, and, they, and they need to process transactions, sales, purchases, so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna look at any particular person, I'm gonna look at what I chose my company. M Mookie the Beagle Concierge, I, I am, you know, I, I enroll myself as a student. Now, what I'm going to show you now is how to review an access log. And most accounting information system will have a log, a transaction log. So I'm going to click here on the gear and I'm going to look at, let's assume, you know, Farhat is my students. I'm the teacher or if I'm the manager, Farhat is one of my employees. I can go to their audit log and I would know exactly what Farhat did. Like, for example, here, user Farhat as a student. I know they changed their settings September 3rd at 4.09. Uh, I would know exactly what they did, or let me take a look at, you know, Mansour Farhat, what he did. I can see at September 10th, 1101 11 p.m., added an account called Utilities, Farhat to Water and Utilities. So I can see the history. What did Farhat did, what time, when, so on and so forth. So this is a transaction log. This is important. This is an output because now the, the, the transaction is finished. Now I can see what's going on. Again, this log could be output or processing. You know, you can argue both ways. I like to, to think of it's an output because it happened after the fact. You can only produce this after the transaction has been processed and you would see exactly what your accountant did. For example, in any of my students here, I can go into their account and know exactly, you know, exactly what they did. Did they follow the transaction properly as instructed by the course instruction or if they did not? if they did it or not, what time they did it, so on and so forth. This is the importance of a transaction log. Also, t talking about the printer, sometimes the printer will have what's called spooling print file where the file is skewed. But this is important too as an output control because sometimes the company might be printing sensitive data. So before you can print this data, for example, you send something to the printer, maybe a sales report. Well, guess what? That sales report gets skewed into the printer and but it doesn't print until you walk in, at the print you walk to the printer and you input some sort of a code or some sort of a password that trigger the output in other words you don't want someone you don't want to click on the printer maybe get busy the printer print the file and your coworkers or someone else sees see those files what you do is you walk to the printer and you input the file and believe it or not when i was in the real world and the real world means when i was working Actually, one time, and I was shocked when I worked at a CPA firm, that I was able to see the earnings per one quarter for the partners. I was shocked. I mean, I was printing a return, and the papers were, you know, the the the, the uh, one of the partners was printing the report, and basically, I picked it up with my tax return. I went back. I was looking over my tax return. I was like, "What is this Excel graphs is doing in my tax return?" And I saw exactly. <laughs> what each partner was doing. I immediately walked and I saw what, you know, <laughs> who is the big player and who's the small player who's still new in the business, so on and so forth. But it, it was unintentional, but I just, I could not help it. The graph looked like so, <laughs> it was a good graph actually, because it shows you exactly the name of the people versus what they were earning for that quarter, what's their sales or the revenue for the quarter. So obviously I told the partner that, look, this is this was by mistake because obviously they were looking for it and it was part of my paper. But if that if that firm had output control when the partner prints, 
it will not print until the partner is standing there and they'll input their code, print that report, takes the report with them, end of the story. Well, those are basically the output controls as part of application controls. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, look at additional resources. That's going to help you understand this application control. Whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Don't shortchange yourself. Farhat is on your side, whether you are a student or a CPA candidate. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.